Ah, well, I'm glad we had a moment to spend together before the others got here. See, I'm just relaxing here in the tub, sort of like the calm before the storm. Well, it's not that I'm nervous or anything, but if I was the kind of person that got nervous when her life was on the line, well, I guess I'd be breaking out in a technicolor rash about now from all the good advice that people's been giving me. <laughs> people's been saying stuff to me like, well, Dolly, you're never gonna sing like Glenn Campbell, and you're never gonna be as funny as Cara Burnett, and you're never gonna look like Cher. Heck, I know that. <laughs> I'm not trying to compete with those great people. I'm just out here trying to be myself, and I'll let you folks decide whether that's good or bad. But at least I got your attention. <laughs> I mean, if sitting in a bubble bath is not enough to get your attention, well, you know, what can I tell you? But it's all right with me, because I've been in hot water before. But I really am happy that I had this chance to chat with you, and I want you to know that I am going to bust my bubbles to try to please you. Well, it's about time for the game, and I guess I better go get in my uniform. I'll see you out front. series and I just can't believe this has really happened to me. You know, when I was a kid growing up in the Smoky Mountains, I never dreamed I'd end up in the Beverly Hills. <laughs> but I've always dreamed about this and now I get to share that dream with you. Now this is not my first shot at a television show. Some of you might remember I worked out of Nashville on a syndicated show for quite a while and I enjoyed it. It was kind of hard because I was working on a shoestring, but it's nice to have the whole shoe. <laughs> It is. I'm going to really enjoy this, and we're going to really try real hard to do something to please everybody. For you ladies, I'm going to be wearing some pretty spectacular gowns, and for you men, I'm going to be wearing some pretty spectacular gowns. <laughs> oh, and for you little kiddies, we got some great stuff like Pee Wee Herman and Hulk Hogan. Oh, and for you teenagers, I'd like to tell you we're going to have Bruce Springsteen on the show. to tell you that we couldn't get him <laughs> yet anyway believe me there's a lot of people that's tried to warn me about doing a television show they said why on earth dolly would you want to do a tv show that's hard work you got to get up at five o'clock for hair do your hair and then you got to be in makeup at six you got to be in costume at seven i thought shucks i'm doing that anyhow why not have my own television show <laughs> anyway i'm real real happy to have you here I truly mean that, and I'll see you in a minute. This 
is my favorite part of the show because this is where I get a chance to benefit womankind. Now, instead of you gals having to get all dressed up and mess with your hair and then have to spend all evening trying to entertain some old handsome movie star, well, I figured I'd make that sacrifice for you. But you can thank me later because here he comes now. <laughs> Woo, I'm excited. Well, Dudley, please come in. <laughs> Anymore. He is just too cute to live. How oh. are you? Welcome in. Speak again, bright angel. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ears. Wow, what a beautiful way to say hello. Yeah, it works for me. <laughs> Here's fennel for you and columbine, a daisy and some violets, and rosemary for remembrance. Pray you love, remember. Hm. How could I forget? <laughs> Dudley, you are such a sweetie. Oh, sweet is for the sweet. Uh, uh, why don't you have a seat? Oh. And I'll put these flowers in some water. Maybe you can open that champagne that I've got chilling over there. Mm. <laughs> yes. You do want some champagne, oh, don't oh, you? Oh, good Lord, yes, yes. I, I, uh, I can't see how a little glass can hurt. Unless, of course, you step on it oh. barefoot. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can That's... tell you just to that. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, goodness gracious. Thank you. Well, um, bottoms up. Yes. Oh, in, in my case, I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, <laughs> how's, the, uh, how's the show going? I, oh, I, I can't complain, really. Mm. But I would like to develop further. Further? <laughs> well, I, I meant as an actress. Oh, oh. Yeah, I mean, you're an accomplished actor, and you could really give me some good advice, I'm sure. Number one, I think. Uh, never follow an animal act. Oh, poo. Yes, that's one very good reason. <laughs> now, you see, I am serious, and you are not taking me serious, I can tell. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand, though, were that I a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. Wow. <laughs> you keep talking like that, you can touch anything you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I have a small list, actually. <laughs> Somewhere upon my person. You, you know, you have got quite a line. Well, thank you. Always remember that acting is reacting. Um, do you mind if we do a little love scene together? You mean one as hot as you did with Bo Derrick? Oh, much hotter. She was only a ten. <laughs> oh, well, if I must, I must. Yeah. <laughs> What's the scene? Uh, it's the soliloquy from Hamlet. Well, that's not a love scene. I know, but I love the way I do it. <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's improvise and, um, and see where the muse takes us. I just love it when you talk theater. Yes, I, I do too. Um, as you're from the South, uh, we'll, we'll set the scene there. You are, um, Ethel Jones, okay. the, the belle of Memphis, and I am, uh, Captain Beauregard Latimer Trueblood III. Well, I'm Ethel Jones, and you're Captain Beauregard Latimer Trueblood? The third. Well, how come I'm so plain and you're so fancy? That's what little girls have been asking little boys for years. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel, my love, before I go to battle, would you honor me with one last dance? Well, I... A hair's breadth away from you is a furlong too far, my love. Well, I... Will you hold me till daybreak, my, my golden hair? Popsicle. Oh, well, I... <laughs> oh, boy, I mean, I love this serious acting. Trouble is, I'm serious and he's acting. Well, you are acting, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, I... I, I... Or are you reacting? Well, I... You, you will uh, show me again sometime how to do this whole thing, right? Well, I... Yes, yes, that's the good thing about the theatre. Um, you know, uh, an actor can always use another lesson. Well, it's time for my cold shower, some root canal work. Um, um, I hate to act and run, but I, I, I <laughs> really must be going. Oh, pardon from pardon is such sweet sorrow. That I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. Oh, good. You didn't know I knew Shakespeare, did you? <laughs>
<laughs> you know, Dudley, let's just forget this whole thing, because these folks know, and you know, that I'm going to never be a serious actor. But I know for a fact that you are a serious piano player. Can we just cut this bull and you go play for me? Oh, I... Yeah, would you like that? <laughs> okay. oh. and this is my husband, J.C., and he's one of the funniest men you could ever know. You ought to really know him, get to know him. He's a lot funnier than Johnny Carson, and I've seen you on that show a number of times. So if you think he's funny, then you should meet my husband, right? <laughs> My name's Bob. Well, Bob, would you be willing to help me out with something here? I certainly would. Okay, hold this right here. I've put my finger at a spot there that I want you to read this prediction right here. Dolly Parton will announce she's falling madly in love with a 300-pound professional wrestler. <laughs> She'll write a song about their relationship titled, Headlock on My Heart. <laughs> and feature her massive muscle men in the video. Now, this actually came out in this magazine. Now, you, you folks, I'm sure, buy these every week at the supermarket, right? Oh, yeah. And you know they never put anything in these magazines. It's not true, oh, right? Yeah. You know, so I figured since I was going to fall in love anyhow, why wait? So I went out and I found me a 300-pound wrestler, and I sat down and I wrote a song called Headlock on My Heart, and I did a video. As a matter of fact, in the same magazine on the uh, page opposite, there was a picture of Hulk Hogan. Now, I love Hulk Hogan. My daddy's crazy about him. So I called Hulk. I said, would you do this? Because the song is a fantasy. It's about a guy named Starlight Starbright. He said, ah, oh, sure, I'd do anything with you, Dolly. I said, well, thanks, Hulk. I'll hug your neck. So wouldn't that be something <laughs> if me and Hulk really wind up getting married? Watch this video. <laughs> Magazine. Then I watched him on TV, then I bought a ringside seat. His name was Starlight Starbright, the greatest in the land. He sprinkled stardust in my eyes, I was his biggest fan. He's got a headlock on my Wrestling fans, big and small, who's the greatest of them all? He dazzled them with brilliance, he outshined all the rest, and I loved the heart that beat beneath his massive golden chest. this woman to be your luck for wedded wife? I do. And do you take this man to be your luck for wedded husband? I do. I truly do. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may now kiss the bride. Me. God, it's a whole new wrestling 
good match for him. I guess you could say he's pinned me down for a lifetime. He's got a headlock on my heart. It was a takedown from the start. He's a master of the art. He's got a headlock on my heart. He's got a headlock on my heart. Never let it be said that I don't cooperate with the press. I also want you to help me thank the Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, for being such a good sport. We just love this. He's a wonderful guy. Thank you. And we'll be right back. It was a takedown from the start. Sometimes I go walking through fields where we walk long ago in the sweet used to be. And the flowers still grow, but they don't smell as sweet as they did when you picked them for me. And when I think of you and the love we once knew, how I wish we could go back in time. And do you ever think back on old memories like that? Or do I ever cross your mind? Yeah. Oh, how often I wish that again I could kiss your sweet lips like I did long ago. And how often I long for those two loving arms that once held me so gentle and close. When old memories appear, my eyes won't stay clear. When I think of those happier times, and do you ever recall these old memories at all? Or do I ever cross your mind? Or do I ever Cross your mind Do I ever cross your mind Don't break my hair, boys. <laughs> And we have this little song out on a little 45 speed record and let's play like we put it on the record player We flip it up on 78 speed and see how we sound you boys as wound up as you guys want to go yeah. Yeah. Is there a bass part on that? I think we'll find one. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's see. This is one of those times when I said we was gonna look stupid <laughs> um, This is it don't it amaze you what grown people will do for attention as if i hadn't done enough in my lifetime <laughs> I'd like for you to meet this good-looking group of guys here. They call themselves a cappella, which is what you call that kind of singing without music. And that was very clever. This guy thought of that. This is Howard Smith. This is Gene Miller. This is Richard Dennison. And David Rowland. And of course, you already know that I'm Barbara Mandrell. Anyway, we have one more little thing we'd like to do for you. And it goes like this. Is that the one? That's it. P.W. Herman, I you hear you calling me. I'm coming to see you, my friend Pee-wee. My friend Pee-wee. Take it away, Pee-wee. Hiya, Dolly. How are you? <laughs> oh, too much. Uh, why? Hello, Miss Parton. <laughs> what brings you here? <laughs> no. Oh, 
Good evening, my dear. So nice of you to come. <laughs> no. Come on, Pee-wee. Don't be nervous. Oh, sure. Who's nervous, Cherry? It's just the most exciting time of my whole life. <laughs> Dolly Parton is coming to visit me, Pee-wee Herman. But you invited her. Yeah, I know. That's right. I did. <laughs> hey, Pee-wee, she's coming, Pee-wee. She's coming. <sighs> <laughs> I'm not nervous. No, not a bit. <laughs> well, hiya, Pee Wee. Hooray! 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 Uh, Barton, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Thank you. What are you doing here? Oh, well, you called me, don't you remember? Oh, <laughs> did I? <laughs> of course. It just slipped my mind, oh. that's all. <laughs> Well, come on in, Thank come on you. in. Down, dog chair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you won't bite. Oh, there's not as much to bite as there used to be. <laughs> mm, I'll say Slim City. <laughs> Thank you. Did you know, you told me on the phone that you had something important to tell me. Oh, well, uh, uh, Cherry, did you meet Dolly? No, I haven't. Hello. How are you, Cherry? <laughs> Would you like to sit down? She's what really comfortable. Are you sure you wouldn't mind? It would be an honor for you to sit on me. Well, thank you. Then I guess you could say I'll be really sitting pretty. Oh, this is so comfortable. I almost forgot. I have a present for you. For me? <laughs> oh, that's very nice. I wonder what you got there. I made it myself. Dr. Seuss wrapping paper. Oh, that's nice. I wonder what it is. <gasps> oh, well, that's very nice. It's a picture of you. A picture of me? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't see me in the picture. That's because you're behind the tree hiding. I don't draw people too good. Oh, well, then it looks exactly like me, hiding behind a tree. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Something's burning. My dinner. Dinner? Pee-wee, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. I hope you don't mind. It's only a pretend meal. Oh, that's the goodest kind. That means there's no calories, right? <laughs> So, Pee-wee, what's this important thing you wanted to talk to me about? Mm. Oh, the thing. Yeah. Well, uh, well, it's like... Uh, Pee-wee, I, I, I have an idea. Really, I, I want to let you know that I really, really like you two very much. You do? Yes. Oh, well, I knew that. <laughs> I was just playing hard to get. You know, kind of my macho side. Oh, I understand, but I really think the two of us could be great friends. I think we could have a lot of fun together. Oh, Dolly. This is all happening so suddenly. I'm a nervous wreck. Oh, don't be nervous. You know what I do when I get nervous? I sing. Would you like to try that? Me? Yeah. Sing with you? A song? Dolly Parton, Pee Wee Herman, a duet? I don't see why not. No. Oh, come on, Pee Wee. Mm, maybe, but you'll have to beg. Hey. <laughs> hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How's about about keeping steady time with me. I'm gonna throw my date book over the fence and find me one for five or ten cents. I'll keep it till it's covered with eight and I'll write your name down on every page. Ah, hey, 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 good looking. Yankees are batting for you, Dolly. Yeah! <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There 
to you, honey. Dolly, you send me. Dolly, you send me. Dolly, you send me. Honest you do, honest you do, honest you do. Oh, 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 oh. Dolly, we need you in the Navy. <laughs> Y'all know Oprah Winfrey, of course. <laughs> you know how sometimes when you meet somebody and you feel like you've known them all your life? Well, that's exactly how I felt when I met you. You know, I felt exactly the same way. I had been wanting to meet you for the longest time, and then when I finally did meet you, it was like we'd known each other all our lives and had been joined at the girdle. <laughs> 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 or should I say, um, hip bone, since you don't wear a girdle no more. <laughs> yeah, that's all behind me for the moment. <laughs> I always think I'm just gonna wake up every day and have all that back on me, you know? It's like, I think, used to, I used to wear my girdle so tight, I, I honestly think if, if it had exploded, it'd blow it up L.A. <laughs> I know what you mean. But you know, I've always believed that women should be liberated from anything that restricts them. So back when everybody was burning their bras, I burned my girdle. I would never have been so bold as to try to burn my bra. It would have taken the fire department three weeks to put the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're funny, ain't we, Oprah? <laughs> Now, let's just see how funny we are. Thank you, dear. You have a lovely voice, but the problem is you are just a little too young for the part of Bess. But I have a gray wig. Thank you, dear. Next. Great singer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello, I'm here to audition. How nice. But we are doing Porgy and Bess. Yes, I know. I love it. I've been singing Summertime all the way over here. I'm sorry. I am sorry, but you are desperately wrong for this part. How can you say that? You didn't even hear me sing yet. That will not be necessary. Oh, sure. Here it comes again. I heard it when I auditioned for Dream Girls, Raising in the Sun, and The Wiz. Same old story. Too short. <laughs> Height has nothing to do with it. Well, what is it then? Well, 
you're very pretty. And you uh, are you poised, you have good energy, and uh, you're probably a fine actress and an accomplished singer. But the problem is that you are, uh, you, uh, the problem is wrong color. Wrong color? Wrong color. Hmm. You know, you do have a point. And I appreciate your honesty, I really do. And I'm glad you told me the truth. Thank you very much. <sighs> Barry, I have never felt so uncomfortable. I can't, I mean, I'm shattered. Shattered, just shattered. But Hello, I'm back. And you were so right. I look much better in red. Summertime and the living is easy. I cannot believe I'd stoop so low for a laugh. <laughs> Good looking. Uh, my own true love. How you doing? Uh, how are I haven't you, seen you since you gave me the key to the city. I wouldn't recognize uh, you. You wouldn't? Well, my I dressed up for God. you. What do you think? You're absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. Do I look like I belong at, at the you mansion? Could, would you like to stay over tonight? Ah, I'd love to. You heard it right here, folks. <laughs> little bit of a song that I wrote many years ago about my growing up days in the Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee. For those of you that don't know that much about me, I grew up in a family of 12 kids up there in a little old shack, and we had a lot of hard times, but we had a lot of good times too. And my daddy was a farmer, and he worked real hard to raise us, and mama, she did all she could to help him. And she used to do all the clothes that we used to wear. People used to send her a lot of scraps, because she used to also make a lot of quilts and things like that. And this one particular time, in my life, I needed a little coat to wear to school, and Mama didn't have enough fabric out of the same color to make me a coat. But she made me one out of a bunch of scraps. I figured she figured I'd look better in a coat than a quilt, so she made it into a little coat. And of course, I couldn't wait to get to school the next day to show the kids my new coat and to show them how much I looked like Joseph from the story in the Bible that Mama had told me. But when I got there, kids kind of laughed at me, and they didn't think I looked just a whole lot like Joseph. And I ran home telling Mom all about it, and I was crying. And she said, honey, don't feel sorry for yourself. Feel sorry for them, because you don't have to have money to be rich. It's what you feel inside. And this particular song I'm going to dedicate to Mama tonight and to Daddy, because I know they're sitting back there in the Smokies watching me, and I know they're real nervous, because this is the first show, and they're wondering how I'm going to do. But you don't have to worry. These folks are treating me real nice. And I hope you like this particular song. And by the way, after this song became a big hit, I told Mama, I said, I want to buy you a mink coat since you made me my little coat of many colors. She said, I don't want no mink coat. I don't have the money. But you're going to get the song tonight. So here's how it goes. Back through the years, I go wondering once again Back to the seasons of my youth I do recall the box of rags that someone gave us And how my mama put the rags to use There were rags of many colors But every piece was small I didn't have a coat And it was way down in the fall Mama sewed the rags together so I never peace with love she made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of while mama sewed she told a story from the bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore and then she said I hope this coat will bring you good luck and happiness and I just couldn't wait to wear it Mama blessed it with a kiss My coat of many colors That my mama made for me Made only from rags But I wore it so proudly And although we had no money I was rich as I could be In my coat of many colors That mama made for me on my brick 
handkerchiefs and holes in both my shoes. In my coat of many colors, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and making fun of me and my coat of many colors that Mama made for me. And oh, I couldn't understand that because I felt I was rich. And then I told them of the love my mama sewed in every stitch. <laughs> I even told them all that story that mama told me while she sewed and why my coat of many colors was worth more than all their clothes. We had no money, but I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors. Mama made for me, she made it just for me. Thank you. Dolly's changing her wigs, but don't go away, because she'll be right back. this part of the show is all about. I wrote that song, Look on the Bright Side, because everywhere you look these days, everybody's got nothing but bad news. You look on television, bad news. Read the newspaper, bad news. Well, people are saying things like the world has changed and people just don't care about each other anymore, but I don't believe that's true. Do you? No, I don't either. So I think it's time for us to have a little time to share some time with each other. And I'm gonna let you folks ask me anything that you want to know. So I'm gonna sit down here and just let you shoot. Now, oh, it's hard to sit in a dress this tight. <laughs> and stop looking up my dress over there. <laughs> uh, anyway, anybody got a question or any good news? Hello, what's your Hi, name? Bob Russell. January 4th, I bought 13 lottery tickets and won 50,000 <gasps> dollars. $50,000, boy, that is good news. That's great. never won a thing in my life. Have most of you, I mean, I have applied for everything. I never win nothing. That's really great. Anybody else got a question or any good news? Ten years ago, I got stopped for speeding. And three years later, I got married to the gentleman that stopped me. <gasps> Is that true? That's great. So, <laughs> so in other words, you collected, right? <laughs> That's great. Anybody else? Uh, my wife and I are great fans of yours. We'd like to say you look great. Thank you. How'd you lose all the weight? You look just super. Well, I worked very hard. It took me a long time. I've been trying to lose weight for years. I didn't actually start gaining weight till I was almost 30. And then after that, I just turned into a real porker. And, uh, <laughs> but anyhow, I, I just eat a lot of very small meals a day. I eat pretty much just pick. I eat what I want. Hope I can keep it off now. That's the hard part because I still want to eat. Inside of me, there's a fat woman trying to get out. <laughs> Anybody else? Hi. Uh, you believe in living together before you're married? Lord, I don't even believe in living together after you're married. <laughs> I've been married for... <laughs> but I'm not one to judge other people. I, I, fig I figure everybody's got their own thing going. And I know a lot of, you know, a lot of people do. I, I certainly ain't one to judge. Anybody else? Where is it? Oh, there you are, huh? Uh, what is your opinion about dating younger men? My opinion about dating younger men? Uh-huh. Well, I don't really get around much, uh, you know, to date. I have been married and I can't, you know, were you trying to get me killed or something? Did you see me somewhere? <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, said, who was that good looking young boy you was with over at Spago the other night? You're sitting over in the corner. I said, you know, look, don't be ridiculous. I was old enough to be that boy's lover. <laughs> used to, you know, it's like if a man had gray hair, he was distinguished. 
The woman had gray hair, she was an old bag. Now, people don't think that anymore. I think it's great that they, you know, that they think of us older women as attractive. Anybody else? I like to know, did you sing in the shower? Do I sing in the shower? Yeah. No, but I don't wash on stage either. <laughs> <laughs> Do I sing that? Let me rock you and be curious about that. <laughs> sing in the bubble bath sometimes. I have an interest in show business, and I'm wondering why did you, uh, why do you feel that you've achieved stardom when so many others didn't? Well, for two good reasons, um, and not the one you're probably thinking. Man. <laughs> no, it's just that I never stopped trying, and I never tried stopping. It's like anything you do, you have to stick with it. Thank Anybody you. else? Do you ever wish you were born a guy? Do I ever wish I was born a guy? Lord, no, I've always been a sissy. And if I'd have been born a man, I'd have been a drag queen. Because <laughs> I love to prim. <laughs> Hi, you have such a beautiful voice. Do you really have to work hard to keep it, or does it just come natural to you? Well, thank you for the compliment. I've never had a voice lesson in my life. I just grew up singing. My, my family's very musical. And, and I just grew up singing those old mountain songs and gospel songs. And uh, what voice I have was just totally God-given, and I've tried to develop it the best way I could. I don't know how good it is, but I enjoy doing it. In fact, I'm going to uh, introduce somebody to you now, talking about making you feel good and talking about God. I love to sing gospel songs, and I'm going to introduce a lady to you now. Well, you've already met her, and you already know her, but talk about making you feel good. I'd walk a thousand miles to sing or see or talk to this woman. Would you help me make welcome again my buddy, Oprah Winfrey? so much fun for me. It has. What is this tonight? Dueling dresses? No, no, no. no. I thought I'd give you some chess competition. <laughs> oh, well, you look great. You thank look you. beautiful. So do you. So well, do thank you. You. you know what? It's an interesting thing about working on, 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 on The Dolly Show. I've been here a couple of days, and I swear I can't quit talking like this. <laughs> really, it's infectious. You well, good. Are. You're talking like me now. You want to learn to sing with me? You I, sing, I, don't I, you? You know I can't sing. Oh, you must sing in no. the shower? No, that's why I take baths. Now, somebody told me you sang in church. Yeah, I do, but church is different. It is. Well, I'm going to make you feel at home, because, see, I got you some church music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you look behind you here, we got some stained glass windows coming down. Oh, no. What do you think? Will you help me now? Oh, I don't sing, but I really don't sing. I really don't, because, see, in church, there's a choir, and you have yeah, a choir, well, and you... I've oh, got no. you a choir. I mean, anything you want. As if by magic, here they mercy, come. Mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> I want to see you get out of this in public. Mercy. Oh. And this little song we're going to do, you must have sung in Bible Don't school. Sing. Yeah, vacation. This little Bible light, school. yeah.
want to thank all of you for sharing this time with me, and I especially want to thank all my special guests. And before I go, I'd just like to say this to you. Forgive all who have offended you, not only for them, but for yourself. And also, I hope life will treat you real kind. that you have all that you ever dreamed of. Oh, I do wish you joy. And I wish you lots and lots of happiness. But you know what? Above all of this, I wish you love.
was going to do a network television show. She said, now you keep it clean, Dolly. You just keep it clean. Mama, is this clean enough? I don't know what on earth she thought I was going to say or do on a network television show, but you know how mamas are. <laughs> I'll see you up front. Boulevard, and this just kind of jumped out at me, <laughs> along with the guy that was wearing it. <laughs> you know, you really do see some pretty unusual sights here in this town. That's because everybody is an actor, and if they're not, they want to be. I mean, everybody. I went out to the park the other day, and I saw this tiny little lonely-looking boy, and I was just trying to be friendly, and I went up to him, and I said, hi, you want to play cowboys and Indians? He said, I don't know. I'll have to call my agent. <laughs> say that. It's just a joke, but I gotta learn how to tell them. See, because I want to get on a roll, whatever that means. <laughs> but Hollywood has a lot going for it. You can just have about anything you want in this town. I saw an ad the other day that said, you two can look like Dolly Parton for only $500. Boy, I wish I'd have seen that ad before I ditched out the millions it cost me to look like Dolly Parton. <laughs> amaze you to know how much money it can cost to make a person look this cheap. But anyway, I'm really glad you're here at the beginning of the show, and I'm going to love you even more if you stay with me till the end, and I'll be right back. go any further, I have to make something perfectly clear. You see, my Aunt Evelyn, when I was coming out to California, she asked me if I would have a date with her favorite man in California. And I tried to explain to her that Walter Brennan was no longer with us. <laughs> but she asked me if I'd have a date with her second favorite. Oh, and that must be him right now. Bird! <laughs> Man in Hollywood. 
Kurt, I have not seen you since we did the movie, The Best That's Little, little Beep House, House in, in Texas. Texas. <laughs> You've lost a whole person since well, then. Well, I certainly have, and yeah. you must be happier than anybody. Oh, I am. Yeah. Remember when you picked me up at the uh, closing scene of that off the porch, the next mm. thing I knew, I saw in the headlines, Burt Reynolds hospitalized for double hernia operation. <laughs> <laughs> and that's no joke. It's true. It's, it's the true. Truth. You know, every time I have a little pain, I, I think of you. Oh, do you still? Yeah. <laughs> I pick these outside with a prop man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they're beautiful. Why don't you have a seat, and I'll put these in some water. I'll get rid of these old tacky things. Did you have any trouble finding my place? Uh, no, I didn't have any problem. I just uh, looked for the house with rhinestones on it. Oh, did you? <laughs> the first off, Bert, I have to explain something to you about this date. You see, I am not doing this for myself. I'm doing this for my Aunt Evelyn. Well, that's okay. I I'm doing this for the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> well, that's good, because I just wanted to make sure we got off on the right foot. All right. Would you like some champagne? Sure. Okay. I'll do it. All right, I'll get our glasses here. You know, to tell you the truth, Bert, I am nervous tonight. I really am. About what? Well, about you. I mean, I know we did the movie together, and I had a great time. We were always on the set, but I have never been in a room alone before with a world-class heartthrob. Neither have I. <laughs> oh, come on. You're Bert Reynolds, macho man. You're like the guy you played in Deliverance. I just know it. The kind of guy that would spend a month in the woods with nothing but guts and a bowie knife. And a color television. <laughs> Actually, I'm into total comfort. Uh, roughing it is, is to, my, to me, I'll just take that again. Okay. <laughs> Since I got these new teeth, boy, nothing else. <laughs> my idea of roughing it is slow room service. <laughs> I shouldn't even have gone back for it. <laughs> okay, shall we go for my last one? Yeah, sure. Okay, I just know you're the kind of man that, now I've lost my card. <laughs> Uh, well, sure, sure. Do whatever they anyway, want. Anyway, I know you're the kind of person that would just be out in the wilderness for a month or two with nothing but guts and a boy knife and a pistol and let's see what it's going to <laughs> Actually, I'm into total comfort. My idea of roughing it is slow room service. As long as we're telling the truth, though, I, I, I'm a little nervous about this date myself. Oh, please. What have you got to be nervous about? I haven't had a real date in over 20 years. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't too good at it then. I wasn't either. Oh, come on. No, I, I still remember my first date. I went out with this girl. I mean, I, you know, compared to that, it, it was like uh, Rhinestone would be a big hit. And you'll be doing City Heat too anytime oh. soon. <laughs> hey, look, I'm just kidding, but you know, they can't all be hits. I know. Just two would be good. <laughs> but speaking of flops, my first date was the absolute worst. What was his name? Bobby Joe Watkins. Mm -hmm. Barbara Jean Moody. And he took me to the malt shop. I took her to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> she was the Dairy Queen. <laughs> All of a sudden, there we were, out in the middle of nowhere. Bobby Joe turns to me and says, Guess what, Dolly? We're out of gas. You didn't fall for that, did you? Fall for it? Yeah. I not only fell for it, I pushed that dang truck two miles from the nearest <laughs> filling station. <laughs> yeah. You weren't too quick back then, were you? Well, I was just 16, a mountain girl. I'm smarter now. No, I know. So you never got kissed? Huh? Nope. How about you? I, I gotta tell you something, Dolly. You know, I, I lost my innocence in a drive-in theater. And it would have been all the more memorable if I hadn't been by myself. <laughs> Is that on in cars? I don't think so. <laughs> but see, now, I happen to know how sensitive you are, Bert, because yes. I did the movie with you. But now, I mean, a lot of those people out there, when you are talking about crying in the movie, that just creates a whole different image. I mean, can you imagine Bert Reynolds crying? I cried when we were in the movie together. When I picked you up on the porch. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, Bert, you've been going with Lonnie Anderson... Forever. <laughs> and you've been married to Carl. Forever. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we can't have, like, a real date with, like, any real hugging and kissing. Even my Aunt Evelyn wouldn't want that. The Miami Dolphins would want that. <laughs> really? But I, I really do think that Carl and Lonnie would understand if we mm. celebrated our first date with a harmless little kiss. Yeah. So... Here's to two kisses long overdue. And here's to Carl trusting you with me. And here's to Lonnie trusting you with me. Here's to me trusting Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs>
And here's to me, trusting Carl. Here's to four stupid people. <laughs> Anything for you, Dolly. There are those who love to love me. Take me home and take care of me. Treat me just the way you never do. <laughs> but I'm here on your doorstep. Something I can't seem to help. Like a fool, I'm holding on to you. You don't love, love me, me, you don't, don't love me. me. You place everything above me. But like a fool, I'm holding on to you. And you don't want, want me, me, you don't want me. You, you just hurt and disappoint me. But like, like a fool, I'm holding on to you. song together at the end we did a little bit on 78 speed and a lot of folks wrote in and they thought it was real cute and they wondered if we had something else clever and cute well we racked our brains trying to come up with something and we decided that maybe we'd do a little bit of this song backwards now that's not easy but we worked on it for you folks sure. you boys ready yeah. all right here all right. we go <coughs> <laughs> holy, holy, holy night. Try to undress. We, <laughs> we have to we have to get up and get out of here in 60 seconds. Do the Don't books be here. nervous. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> been walking around here all day and I have been so impressed with how good looking all you guys are. I mean, do women ever <laughs> flirt with you? All the time. Yeah, how yeah. do you handle that? Um, fake it. <laughs> <laughs> you fake it? Oh, sure. Oh, you know. It's like, I was just curious. What do you think as being a fireman is the best part of being a fireman? The guys you work with. Well, it's obvious that you love this job. What is the worst part of it? <laughs> really? The worst part, um, getting up eight times at night. I, I mean, you know, deal with, like living in such close quarters. I mean, I have separate bedrooms or we got like, uh, right up above you have one great big giant dorm. I mean, you know, there's 20 beds up there, no walls, I mean, no separation. Hey, the lockers. I bet you got one of my pictures in there. Ain't you? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. <laughs> uh, no, no, baby, you go first. Oh, okay, if you <laughs> insist. Bed. I want to know, is this planned or were you expecting me or what? <laughs> Captain McKinley, Hi, nice station commander at fire station 27. 
Guys, this is Dolly Parton, in case you don't know her. Yeah, I want to talk to these guys about the calendar. It's like, is this the fire department or is this Chip and Dale? <laughs> I mean, and I want to know if any of you guys are in this calendar. No way. No. no. no Nobody here from there. This is how we're all built. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need that shirt. <laughs> Show me your picture. Uh, they, have, they have an age limit in here, and you're not allowed to be over 30. Uh, is that true? Yes. Well, how old are you? <laughs> 40. <laughs> it's okay. You can talk to me. I'm over 42. Anyways, anybody got anything you particularly want to cover? Are you going to say it slow? I'll try to say it slow. How we, this is how we feel about our job and about you being here today. Let's see if I can do this right. When danger is your business and you sign on to save lives and fight fires and you're a coiled spring 24 hours a day at the beck and call of the citizens of Los Angeles and ready to throw yourself on the brink of danger at any given moment with lungs of leather and shoulders of steel and ready to do battle on a field pattern after hell itself, then doing a special for you at the fire station is an honor. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Thank you. Well, you folks don't mind if I just come and plop down here with you, do you? I'd like you to join us. You like that? Good. I'm glad. You, you're familiar with the CMA Awards, right? The Country Music Awards. It's sort of like the Oscars of country music. And it's a real honor to win any of those awards. And the biggest award of all, the most prestigious one, is Entertainer of the Year. And I won it one time. But my next guest, they have won it three times in a row. Now, that's the first in uh, country music history for anybody to do that. And uh, I was a little envious at the start, and then I thought, well, when I got this show, I thought, well, if you can't beat them, have them join you. Would you help me make welcome Alabama? It was July hot across Georgia on my way to Murphy. I just got my diploma, so I set out in search of me. The honeymoon was over, and Alabama was far away from being little more than just a southern state. I got a gig down at the Bowery. I played for ten. That's seldom what it seems And where are you going, Tartar? Where's J.C. and the chosen few? I saw the flash without T.J. Tree And B.B. Left a mile of blues Well I was July hot and 30 Some years down the line When the boys touched the nation Unaware at the time I got to go to Texas California, New York too a farm boy who is thankful to be standing in his shoes But in the Bowery hangs the memories Of dreams that still come true Every time I see the spotlights I'm one of the chosen
know it's us, just us. Everybody loves sushi, but I love you. Stay tuned. Dolly, we love you. Keep hamming it up. Good night. Good night. Like, was that woman like in a terrible accident or like did you do something to her hair? <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry, but we're closed now. Oh, like, I know that, but, like, this is really an emergency, okay? My hair is really thrashed. It's like a total emergency. It's like cold blue. <laughs> Honey, this is a beauty parlor, not a trauma center. <laughs> like, I know that, but, like, this really gorgeous guy... Like, sit down, I'll tell you, okay? Like, this really gorgeous hunk Ola, like, came up to me and said, how are you? And, like, I couldn't believe it, okay? So I said, like... How are you? And he said, fine. And I said, fine. And we said, fine, OK? So he then says to me, come to my van, right? And I said, OK. And he said, OK. And we said, OK. But then he said, like, how old are you? And then, like, how did you go? Well, I, you know, I sort of told him I was a little older than I am. How old are you? I'm going to be 19 in October. 19? Uh-huh. Well, October 1992. Honey, I can fix your hair to look like Ethel Waters, but your hormones are still going to be 14. If I were you, I believe I'd give it about six years. Six years? Are you crazy? I mean, like, he's not going to wait that long. I mean, do you know what the parking on that van is going to be in six years? 
Believe me, there'll be lots and lots of other guys and lots and lots of vans. But no, there won't. There won't. This is it. This is real. I mean, like, I'm talking about a total commitment. I mean, I'm there, he's there, we're there together. And, like, it's really purple, okay? And it, like, totally moves with, like, incredible music. And it's totally, like, covered in fur. I hope you're talking about the van. <laughs> Confidentially. Being invited to this van is, like, tragically cool. Do you know that all the girls on the beach would give anything? I'm sure plenty of them have. <laughs> Honey, if you get in that van, you're gonna get in trouble. Well, oh. If I knew I was gonna get a lecture, <laughs> I would have gone back to school, okay? I mean, gosh, you sound just like my friend Tiffany's mother, you know? She always says, Tiffany, and Tiffany goes, what? She goes, you're gonna get in trouble. And Tiffany says, no, I'm not. But like, she did get PG, you know? I mean, I'll admit it, she did get pregnant, and like, she really loves the baby. But it's really cool, you know, because like, they're together. I mean, she still gets to do all the stuff she wants to do. I mean, she, she goes to the beach and has like, a really good time, you know? Mm, on the beach, huh? I mean, she goes to the beach, you know, but she can't like, do, I mean, she's gotta take care of the baby, you know? I mean, she goes. <laughs> I don't know how to say this without sounding like Tiffany's mom, but maybe I can tell you this in a way maybe you can relate to. I mean, like, God, I mean, like, you're only gonna be like 14 and a half, you know? I was like, you're gonna be, there's gonna be like scads of like these really buff dudes in your life. So, I mean, don't be in such a hurry, like, to be so totally grown up, you know, come out, come out. Like, like hang up the phone, okay? <laughs> Like, you are, like, not really very smart, okay? <laughs> I mean, like, you just totally talked me out of it. Getting in the van? No, getting my hair done. <laughs> I mean, wow, you know? And I just, like, really want to tell you one more thing, okay? Yeah, what's that? You talk really weird. <laughs> okay? Dolly, you really rev my motor. Whoa. <laughs> In the hole, Mike. In my Tennessee mountain home, life is as peaceful as a baby's sigh. In my Tennessee mountain home, little piece of a song I wrote called My Tennessee Mountain Home. And this is a very special part of the show for me because this is where I get to reminisce about my childhood in the Smoky Mountains. And I also get a chance to visit with some very special people. And as a matter of fact, I have some very special people here today. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get up and walk over here. And if you see my microphone in my back pocket, don't think it's my tobacco can, okay? <laughs> Hello, Alabama. How you doing? The folks introduced you properly. This is Randy, this is Ted, and this is Jeff. And I want you folks to know I'm really happy to have you with me today. Happy and to be here. come and visit. You know, I was talking about mountain music and Smoky Mountains. I know we all have our memories of like our mountain music. Do you remember your first country song you ever heard, your first mountain memory of music? Well, I remember the uh, there was a radio that was on top of our refrigerator. And uh, the first song I remember hearing was I Saw the Light. Oh, I love it. That's a Hank Williams a song, Hank Williams right? Song. Yeah. You still remember it? You ever sing it? Oh, well, yeah. You feel yeah. led to do a little of it yeah, right now? Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gee. Gee. I saw the light. I saw the light.
Now that'll take you home, won't it? <laughs> Do you, do you have a special mountain memory? Do you remember your first song? What it's was not it? really a mountain song, but they asked me to get up in church and sing, and the only song I knew was, he's got the whole world in his hands. That oh, was when I was about one. five that's or six. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? It probably wasn't a mountain song, but my mother and dad wore out several records of Good Night Irene to get me to sleep when I was a yeah, baby. Yeah, that's a good one. I always liked that, too. My first memory of, of my first memory, period, not just a song, but was of an old lady. Even before I remember mom and daddy and my brothers and sisters, this old woman used to live close to us. In fact, she owned the farm where we lived and my daddy used to share crop. She used to put me on her knees and she'd sing, you know how you dance your kids up and down like, like a trotty horse, trotty horse. She'd sing, tiptoe, tiptoe, little Dolly Parton. Tiptoe, tiptoe, ain't she fine. Tiptoe, tiptoe, little Dolly Parton. She's got a red dress just like mine. She's got a red dress, she's got none. She's got a red dress just like mine. And I go, ha, <laughs> sing it some more, ain't Mark? Sing it some more. And she would, you know, she'd just sing it over and over and she'd give me gingerbread to my little stomach. She just pooched out to here. And years later, I kept eating gingerbread and it got out to there and then it went back. <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys wrote a song years ago, not so many years ago, just a few years back, that I love. And it talks about mountain music and it kind of brings back a lot of memories. And I just wondered if it wouldn't be imposed on you if you'd let me sing a little bit of that with you today. Sure, Good. All right, <clears throat> hit it. Oh, play me some mountain music Like Grandma and Grandpa used to play Then I roll on down the river To cage your heart away Swim across the river oh, okay, Just to prove Something lost feeling Cause that's where music has to start Anyway, I think that was a lot of fun. I don't know if they faded out into commercial or if they're expecting me to take us into one. If you are, we'll take it away, boys. And if you ain't, well, I'm looking real stupid right now. <laughs>
good. Not that we ain't feeling good already, but I'm here to help you feel that way. You know, too many people are telling us too many bad things, but not here, not tonight. We're going to only talk about positive things, right? Yeah! I like that. You're positive already. You know, I know somebody here in this audience that's got some good news, because when I asked him if he'd come and be on the show, he said he would positively love to do it. Would you help me make welcome Mr. Matthew Weaver? Hello, Matthew. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good, how are you? I'm doing great. You know, Matthew happened uh, to be the person that's really doing something special. And he's been cooking and serving food for thousands of people for the last two years, but not in a restaurant. He's been feeding the folks right here in L.A. on Skid Row. And uh, I'd just like for you to tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was about two years ago, my senior year in high school, and I was bad grades, just generally screwing up. And I guess I came to that point where I thought I had to prove to myself and you know my parents I could be responsible. And I was kind of I was looking for a project, so I didn't read the sports one day, and I read the other section. I read an article about the homeless, and I just acted on it. That's great. Now you've been doing this for over two years now. How has this personally enriched your life? Are you not screwing up as bad anymore? Not, not really. <laughs> Would have. Um, uh, it's opened me up to a whole world which I had never seen before. You know, I'd been kind of, I knew about it on the surface, and I finally learned to give, and, you know, now I'm not depending on people. Some people are depending on me for once, and, and that's, so I'm not screwing up as much anymore, just, at least not on Sundays. <laughs> well, I think that's wonderful. I think if there were more people like you in the world, there wouldn't be people in such need. And thank you very much well, for sharing this time with much. us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. You want to help me down? Yeah. Now that, see, that kind of stuff makes you feel good, don't it? Yeah, that's a good positive attitude and a good positive thought. Now I'm gonna sit down here on this little stool and I'm gonna let you folks ask me some questions if you'd like to. And it's like anything you ever wanted to know about Dolly but was afraid to ask. <laughs> I don't care what you ask, because if I don't like what you've asked me, I'll just act like I misunderstood you and I'll just say what I want to. <laughs> Not really, is there anybody out there that might have a question for me? Dolly, you look so young and pretty. Have you ever had plastic surgery? <laughs> oh, thank you, my kind of woman. Especially that young and pretty part. But, well, I tell you what, I don't really want to say whether I have or not. I can say one thing. Most women my age out here in Hollywood has already had more lifts than a naked hitchhiker. But, <laughs> I mean, are you insinuating that I might have a Formica top or something like that? I tell you what I think about plastic surgery. I think it's wonderful that they can help you in any way they can. I think if you can afford to do it, you ain't afraid to do it, it's gonna make you feel better about yourself. I say whatever makes you feel good about yourself, do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Anybody else? I was wondering, how long does it take you to get into the Where are you? Dress? Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take to get in? Into that dress. Are you talking about me or yeah, you? you? You, you. <laughs> as long as you think. I, I have a good staff back there of wardrobe people. Uh, with good looking guys like you though, it don't take me as long to get out of it as it does you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It don't take long. Anybody else? Oh, we got hands flying up everywhere. Who do you resemble most? Your mother or your father? <laughs> well, that depends. You mean before I put on makeup or after? <laughs> look like both my parents. Uh, I have my mother's features, but I have my daddy's color, and my mother's got black hair and uh, dark eyes and dark skin. My daddy's people are fair and blonde, so I actually look like both of them. Thank you, that was a good yeah. one. Hello. Hi, can you tell me about your family, how many brothers and sisters you have? Well, there's 12 of us. There's six girls and six boys in our family, and uh, my mother and father are still very young. They got married at, mom was 15 and daddy was 17, and when mom was 35 and daddy was 37, they already managed to have 12 kids. We got one set of twins. I have a sister and two brothers older than me and eight kids younger. Can you name them? Oh, yeah. Willa Dean, David, Denver, Dolly, Bobby, Stella, Cassie, Randy, Larry, Floyd, Fried, and Rachel. In that order. <laughs> Be proud of me for that. How can you play guitar with such long nails? I can't do that. Pretty dang good. <laughs> Just every now and then I'll tear one of them out with glue. <laughs> but actually I've learned a way to, to tune the guitar. It's, it's called open tuning. And when I get real serious about writing songs and uh, you know, getting down to the nitty gritty and spending a few weeks really working serious, then I cut these nails off and then I write my songs and put them on tape, and then I go get a brand new set. These are acrylic nails. 
I can build one if I break one. <laughs> I'm such a phony. <laughs> Anybody else? Dolly, I think it's wonderful that you have a career in such a close family. How do you keep the man in your life on the top of your chart? Oh, uh, well, we first of all, we've been together uh, for 22 years now. And we're really good friends, first of all. I think in any marriage, it's, you have to start out being good friends, or you certainly have to become friends in order to make it last. But marriage is kind of like uh, a guitar. You can make beautiful music, but there are strings attached. <laughs> I was wondering, how old were you when you first started playing the guitar? Well, I started singing when I was just a tiny little girl, and I, I started learning chords on the guitar when I was about five or six. And I started writing serious songs and playing uh, the guitar serious when I was seven. And I started on radio and television when I was 10 years old. And I've been at it ever since. Are you a singer? Uh, sort of. I Are sing you? with my mom. Oh, great. Well, good luck to you. Who knows? You and your mom might turn out to be the Judds. <laughs> great. Good luck to you in your career. Hello. Hi, I was just wondering if you had any children. No, I don't have children. I've uh, always been very involved with my own family, and several of my younger brothers and sisters have spent a lot of time with me and, uh, when they were young. And now my nieces and nephews are growing up, and they all call me Aunt Granny. So I'm like their grandma and their aunt. But I'm uh, very close to my family, but I'm, I was never able to... make a great mother. I would, would love to have had kids, but I, I had some physical problems, and I was not able to have them. But I, I love everybody's kids. As a matter of fact, I want to introduce some real special folks to you that's going to help me sing a little song. And this is a song written by Ray Bunch, our musical director. And they've just invited a whole bunch of kids down here. Ray's got a couple of kids here. And here's Ollie. Let me find a seat right in here with you pretty girls and boys. This is Ollie and Aaron. And we just got all kinds of folks here. You got your parts ready? They've been practicing all day doing their little hand jive, and they've got a little hand clap to do, and I just couldn't get coordinated enough to do it, so I figured I'd just sing. You ready? Everybody ready? Yeah, everybody smiling? Yeah, everybody smile now. My name is Jonah.
want to thank you for spending this time with me. And I'd also like to thank all my special guests tonight. And I'd like to leave you with a thought. If there's something you really, really believe in, and you know in your heart that it's right, well, you stand up for it, then duck. <laughs> I'd also like to say that I hope life will treat you real kind. And I hope that you have all that you ever dreamed of. And I wish you joy. And I wish you happiness. But you know what? Above all of this, I wish you love. make fun of applause signs on television shows, but I think they happen to be about the greatest thing in the 20th century. I think they rate up there with pantyhose and chicken McNuggets. <laughs> really? I mean, I was just thinking that everybody ought to have their own applause sign. That way, like when you come to work in the morning, you walk in the door, the applause sign goes on and everybody gives you a big hand for just showing up. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what else? Housewives should have applause signs. 
that light up when they put a nice dinner on the table? Wouldn't that be a nice thing? I think little kids should have applause signs. That way, when they bring home a good report card, well, they get a big hand for that. You know, and come to think of it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have one in the bedroom either. <laughs> Unless, of course, some of you think that a laugh track would be more appropriate. <laughs> Real lucky to have mine. And for all you folks that don't ever get the applause that you deserve, well, here's one for you. Well, it's date night again, and you ladies hold on to your hats because this next guy is so hot, he has to wear oven mitts to put his pants on. <laughs> you know, I'm really looking forward to this date because this guy is so different, so hip and so streetwise and so cool. Oh, don't it just amaze you how that doorbell always rings just as I'm about to finish the introduction? <laughs> Nonetheless, I must get the door. Well, Bruce Willis! Well, at him, Miss Dolly. Yeah, you're, you're as cute as a, a, a newborn possum. <laughs> at least he looks like Bruce Willis. Uh... I come a courting and I, I brung you these here flowers, Miss Dolly. Well, they're beautiful. You know, I have flowers growing like this out in my window box. Not anymore. Uh, why don't you have a seat and I'll arrange these beautiful flowers? Okie doke, Miss Dolly. You know, I'm a, I'm a little nervous about meeting you and all. I'm a, about as jumpy as a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. <laughs> I think that weed he's chewing on is doing something to his brain. You are the Bruce Willis, a star of Moonlighting, the yep. one that just won the Emmy? Yep, yep, yep. You're as right as rain, little darling. <laughs> Was your mother frightened by Ernest Tubb? <laughs> oh, didn't work, did it? Well, I mean, I was just wondering what you're doing this cornball accent for. It's the next thing I know, you're going to be calling hogs. <laughs> no, I was... Saving that for the big finish, darling. Aw, uh, you know, Bruce, if you're doing this for my benefit, you can just stop it, because it's not necessary. Oh, um, I'm a little ashamed of myself now. I... Isn't this the way you court a country girl? Well, maybe on reruns of Green Acres, but not here. You see, I want you to just relax and be yourself. Why don't you just have some champagne and we'll just relax you? Well, I had to give up champagne. Seems like every time I had a glass, the police came to my house. <laughs> Is that on the cue card? I don't uh, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> uh, look, I'm sorry. I uh, this whole country boy thing. I just, I'm from New Jersey. I, I know you're from Tennessee. I want to have something in common with you. That's all. Oh, now just because I'm from Tennessee and you're from New Jersey, that don't mean that people are not the same everywhere. I think boys and girls are the same everywhere. Really? Yeah, I do. Well, what was it like dating where you grew up? Well, probably the same as it was where you grew up, except that I was the one wearing the earrings. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw it in. You don't mind. You're cute, don't you? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, don't... <laughs> I grew up in a pretty tough neighborhood, darling. Yeah, well, first, we'd go for a drive. Well, so would we, as soon as we stole a car. <laughs> and then we'd go for a romantic walk down by the river. Well, in New Jersey, you could walk right on the river. <laughs> And then we'd carve our names on a tree. We would just carve our names in each other. <laughs> right on the arm there. Yeah, I know. And uh, what did you do next? Well, uh, I'd um, hold the girl in my arms. Really? Mm -hmm. Would you show me how you used to do that? Now, strictly for educational purposes, of course. Ah, yes, educational purposes. Well, uh, you kids at home, don't try this. <laughs> We're trained professionals here. You... <laughs> 
do this for a living. <clears throat> well, first I'd um, slide my arms around the girl like this, and then I'd give her a little kiss on the neck. Mm, just like that. Does that ring any bells? Oh, it's certainly ringing mine. <laughs> and then I'd uh, whisper a little something in your ear. I'm glad you can't hear what he's saying or what I'm thinking. <laughs> and then we'd uh, sometimes sit in the park and listen to the howling of the New Jersey Coyotes. What in the world's a New Jersey Coyote? It's a semi-pro baseball team. That, uh, <laughs> I see. We too many games. Oh, wait, uh, well, you know, the Atlantic Ocean was there. We'd drive down the shore and roll down the windows and just be taken away by the sounds of the night. Take me. Under the boardwalk, down by the sea, yeah. On a blanket with my baby is where I'll be. Oh, I love that song. That's yeah. Um, B, what did they do? Where you come from? Never mind that. We usually go back to the song on this show and then fade the commercial quickly. <laughs> Under the boardwalk, down by the sea. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that looks like a Tennessee mountain home. What does it need? Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, well, not bad, not bad. Nice full moon. Yeah, that's nice and romantic. Let's see, what else can we do here? How about some stars? Oh, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, Dolly will like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I like that. That looks pretty good. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I like that. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Have a nice day. Oh, oh, just kidding. There we go. Okay, Dolly, how about a little wisp of smoke coming up out of the chimney? Uh, that'd be nice. That's, oh, yeah, that's good. That's nice and wispy. Yeah, I like that. Okay, Dolly, let's just sit down here by the fire and, and uh, get nice and comfortable. Let me turn out this light. There we go. Oh, let me get that kitchen light. Yep, yep, better do that. Gilbert, oh, 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 oh. what the damn hell are you doing? Uh, that's a wife, Dad Gummit. She's always interrupting. Her. Are you having another one of your ridiculous fantasies about Dolly Parton? Ah, oh, I wish the moon would just eat her like Pac-Man. Just... You'll come to bed this minute, or I'm going to pull the plug on that stupid machine. Oh, uh, Dolly, dear, uh, could I ask you a question? Uh, that shotgun over the mantle, is it loaded? Okay, that's it. This is about my favorite part of the show, where I get to uh, visit with folks and friends that I'm very fond of. And I'm sure that there's somebody out there right now looking at me and saying, what's she doing?